Welcome back. In this video, we'll have a look at the text widget in Flutter. Now, we've looked at the text widget before, but we'll dive in a bit deeper into the text widget and what we can actually do with the text widget. So in Visual Studio Code, I created a new project called Flutter Text Widget, and I've just used the Material app, the Scaffold, the Center widget, and then the text will be centered in the middle of the screen. So this is what we've got. Uh, you can work through the previous video if you cannot get to this step. Right, so what I want you to do is to go into your browser and you can search for Google Fonts. And one of the first things that will pop up is Google Fonts Browse Fonts. So it's basically going to fonts.google.com. Now, here you can search for any type of font that you would like. And I think they've got more than a thousand different fonts on the site. So let's search for Roboto. And you can see that when you go down, there's Roboto Mono, there's Roboto, there's Condensed, there's Slab, and so forth. So let's try and see if we can format our text using this font called Roboto Mono. So I'm going to click on that font, and you can see they give you all the different um, values they've got for it. There's a thin version, there's an italic for the thin, there's an extra light, there's a light, there's a regular, there's medium and they're semi-bold, bold, and so forth. And they, they show you how it looks, basically. So when you choose the font for your specific application, uh, you will go to either Google Fonts, and maybe the company, company that you're working for has created their own font. And uh, you need to go and buy that font somewhere or use that inside of the application. So in order to do that, you will then go to that specific font and download the font. So in this case, for Google Fonts, we can download the whole family here for Roboto Mono. So I'm going to click on download there. It will start downloading it and I'm going to open it up in the folder. Now let's extract this. So I'm going to say open with, extract this. And in this folder, I've got all under static. I will get all these different versions that they also listed on this website. So there's thin 100, thin italic and so forth. Right, so we can see the same ones there. There's bold, bold, italic, extra light, italic, italic, light, light, italic, medium, medium, italic, and so forth. So we've got all of these files available, and we can use this in our Flutter application. Right, so what we will do is keep open this folder, we copy these files, and then we're going to go into Visual Studio Code. Inside of Visual Studio Code, we want to create a top-level folder. So make sure you click on something like the readme file there or the pubspec.yaml, and we're going to click on this icon there that says new folder. So you're going to click there and you can see it adds a new folder at the same level as your lib, your iOS, your Android folder. And we're going to call this assets. Inside of the assets folder, so make sure you're clicking on it. And we're going to click a new folder and you can see the indentation there. We're going to have a folder called fonts. Now, what you can do then is to go into your folder called Assets Fonts. Now, under your Project Folders, you'll go into your Project Folder. You can go into the Assets Folder, into Fonts, and those files that you copied previously, we will paste in here. And you'll see that under your Assets now, under Fonts, we will get all of these fonts. So it's the .ttf. All right, so that's step number one. You need to copy all of these fonts into your Project Folder, under the assets folder under fonts and you can place it right there while it's not needed to actually put it into a fonts folder you could have directly put it into assets but it's a bit easier if everything is sorted according to what it actually is so for example you could have your images in another folder go down to the bottom and let's open up the pubspec yaml file now what i want you to do is to go down to the line where it says uses material design true so you can see there's flutter there's some indentation, and this indentation is very important. So please don't change on this, make changes on this file unnecessary. So you can see from the Flutter's indentation, there's basically two spaces, and then we get into using Material Design True. So you're going to enter after that, and we're going to start with fonts. So type fonts, place an enter, and you can see already it places your cursor at the correct space where you actually need to start typing. But it's basically the same level as the fonts with two spaces in. Right, and then we can start typing and make sure that you've got that dash there and then a space again, and then we will indicate the family name. In this case, we will call the family Roboto Mono. That's the same as that we've got there, Roboto Mono. Okay, then you can enter at the same indentation of family you want to have fonts again now again 
from the same level as fonts, two spaces in. You can add your dash again and say asset. And now you need to refer to the specific asset that you want to use. So I'm going to refer to starting with the thin ones. So it's these two, thin and thin italic. So I'm going to refer to it as under the assets folder, there's a fonts folder. And inside of the fonts folder, there's this one called Roboto Mono. And please note the spelling, uppercase, lowercase, everything very important. Dot D. TF. So we will be referring to a specific font in the assets folder in the fonts folder called Roboto Mono Thin .ttf. And now I can assign some values for this font. So I can set the weight for this font. And if you go to the website, you will see that Thin is actually the weight of 100. Extra Light is a weight of 200. So you can actually use that to your advantage here. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. So the weight for the thin font is actually 100. So I'm going to set the weight to 100. Now, because this thin font, well, we will not be using it as a bold or something like that because that's the weight. So bold is normally according to a specific weight, whether it's going to be bold or not bold. So I'm going to copy this part with the asset, copy it, and I want to add another asset now. But now it will be thin italic and because this one is italic the weight should not only be 100 but I should also indicate the style is italic and now we can do the exact same thing for every single one of these fonts so I'm not going to type it out here and waste your time on this video so I'm going to quickly add it here and then we continue the video from there right so when you are done it will look something like this so there's the assets the first one we did thin and thin italic and then we go to extra light and extra light italic. And you can see this one's weight is just 200, but this one's got a weight of 200 and a style of italic. Then we go to mono light and light italic. So it will be 300 and 300, but also italic. Then we go to regular and italic, which is 400. And the second one is italic. Then we go to medium and medium italic weight 500, but this one will have a style of italic then we go to semi bold and semi bold italic both of them are weight of 600 but for this one that says italic we will add the style italic and then we can also see bold and bold italic the same thing again so this is how you will set up a font in your flutter application so firstly you'll need to have the fonts added to a folder and then you can go into the font section and and go and do a specific family so if you've got another family that's called something else and you want to also include it you will basically copy this whole part there up until the bottom and repeat what we did there noting indentation very important as soon as you save your file you will see that it starts flutter pub get now you can also do that by opening your terminal there and just running flutter pub get that will also do the same thing. But in Visual Studio Code, it's quite nice that if you save something in your pubspec.yaml, it will automatically include that as part of your project. Right, so now that we've got the fonts copied, we've got the fonts listed in our pubspec.yaml, we can go to main.dart and play around with the text widget. Now, currently, our text widget is in the middle of the screen, so let's format this text widget a bit. So you'll see as part of the text widget, there's a text style property. We're going to move to this text style property by just saying style and then saying text style. We're going to use that class called text style. And remember to put your commas after everything and then you know when you save it is nicely formatted for you. Right, so what we can do now is to go into the text style and you can see for the text style there is a color, there's a font weight and remember the weights that we have declared there, the weights are 100, 200, 300, up until 700 at the highest weight that we can use with this font family. There's a few settings that we can set for this specific style, but we want to start off with the font family. So we're going to say the font family should be this following text. Now the font family we declared at the top as Robomono. So make sure you use exactly the same spelling. So it needs to be Robotomono. Now let's change something else there as well. So if you put the comma there at the end and save, it will be nicely underneath each other. So let's start with the font size 
and the font size we will make let's say 50 put a comma and then we can have the font weight so let's try the thin one 100 so it's going to be font weight w100 and then let's use the font style as font style dot italic and if we save this now and we run this you will see some changes on your text now firstly you'll see that it is now a lot bigger it is italic and it is in fact the thin robo roboto mono now we can also go to let's say the 700 there save it again and that will give me basically the bold version of this font it is still italic but if i remove the italic there and run it again you will see that we are just working with the normal font without it being italic now we can also set the color so let's go to the color property and set it to colors dot red and maybe let's have it a light red so something like a shade of 200 run it again we can also play around with the letter spacing and that's the space between the letters so let's make it a two there and run this again just to see what is the change in the spacing if we make it for example a two so then there's a bit more space between the letters right so this is the basics then of your text widget and how you can style your text widget now instead of having your own fonts added here and when will you do this is basically when you've got a company that bought a font somewhere that you cannot get actually on the web and they've got the font downloaded and they give you that font in the TTA format and you need to go and add them into fonts but a nice thing about Google fonts if you go to everything you can get on Google fonts on this website fonts.google.com you will also get as part of a dart package which means we can go here and search for Google fonts and if you search for Google fonts in your pub.dev website you will see that it's got a 99% popularity it's made by the material IO team it's a flutter favorite it's null safety it's for Android iOS Linux Mac OS web and Windows so it's available everywhere if you click on that font package and you go to installing you will see that you need to go to your pubspec.yaml file and just add this as one of the dependencies so I'm going to copy it from there let's go to our pubspec.yaml file so it's at the bottom on the left hand side uh, where it says uses material design true so we're going to go up a, a bit and you can see there where we see cupertino icons at the same level we're going to add our google fonts package and you can save and when saving you will see that it will actually add the google fonts package as part of your application once it is done we can go back to main and instead of using this whole text style there we can set the style to Google fonts so if you just start typing Google fonts you'll see it actually pops up Google fonts and that's the package we just imported there or added into our pubspec.yaml and selecting it from here it will auto import that package for you so at the top you can see that we've got the package called Google fonts and we are using the Google fonts.dart file and if you put the dot there you can now see all of the different fonts available for you and it's basically everything listed on this web page called Google fonts so every single font that you can think of I think there's uh, around about a thousand different font families in here uh, you can actually have access to them by using that package so let's see if Roboto Mono is there so I will just start typing ro Robo and you can see there's Roboto Roboto Mono so I'm going to choose it from there and end it off with a comma now we can do the same things again if you hover over that let me just remove this if you hover over it you will see there's still a text style there's a color there's a font size a font weight there's word spacing letter spacing the font style all all those that we actually use now so let's do that again we will say the font size should be let's say 50 uh, let's go to the font weight and the font weight should be let's say 200 and sometimes adding your comma at the end actually removes the last bracket so just make sure that it's still there okay and if we save now you can see that 
This Roboto Mono, the font size is 50, the font weight is 200. Let's say the font style to font style.italic. And let's run this again. And you can see we are back at the W200. We can also go to the thicker one, the 700. Maybe make it not italic, but we can set the color there and say colors.red and maybe make it a 200 shade. Save it again. Let's run it. And we are back at the exact same font we had previously. So it is up to you if you're using some custom fonts that you cannot get online or you need to buy for it online, then this will be the way to add it to use your assets and your font folder and it will add it to it. If you're using the Google fonts, it will actually just download the first time it runs the app. It will download the fonts into your system and you've got access to those fonts right away by just using the Google fonts package. All right, so now the last thing I want to look at in the text or as part of the text widget is to use the rich method here. So let me just go to the end of the text widget and let's remove it totally. And let's say text dot rich now if we quickly have a look at this rich method that we see here we can see it's part of the text class there's a rich method that basically includes a text span and then there's a text style there's a strut style there's text align there's soft wrap overflow and so forth so what i want to do now is to have a text span widget inside of this rich method now if i hover over it you can see the text span takes in a text so let's start with that. I will have text and let's have the text just say hello. Put a comma there and let's save it quickly. Let's put a comma there as well between those two so it's nicely formatted. Right, so if we run it now, we will just see hello there. Right, so basically the same as a normal text widget, just showing it in the middle. Now what is different here? For this text span, you can see that we can also add a style. So let's add a style quickly there. I will have a style there, and the style, the style can now again be the text style, or we can go to Google Fonts dot Roboto Mono again, and put a comma at the end. Right, if we save now, it will now be Roboto Mono. So let's set the text size or the font size to be. 40. Let's set the color to be colors.black and let's use the black 87. Put a comma at the end and let's save again. Now let's also use the font weight as font weight.w300 and let's save. Now let's run this again and see what we have. Right, so you can see that we can still format the text as we want. We're using Roboto Mono, the font size is 40, the color is black, the font weight is W300. But uh, why do we use the reach method then with text span instead of just using the text widget and using the style? Now the nice thing about this text span is you can have a list of children which is also text spans. So I'm going to do the following. You'll see the text property, then there's the style property. So after the style property there, so you can just click on Roboto Mono, it will show you where it ends. And we're going to use then the children property here. And for the children, you can just have two or opening and a closing block bracket there and go into it. Make sure you put the comma at the end. Now inside of the children, I can have another text span or as many text spans as I want. So I can have one there, I can have another one after it, that's the children. And now I can have the text property again. And let's say we want to have the text world there. But for this text world, we also want to have a style. So I'm going to say style again. And that style will be, let's use that again, Google Fonts, dot Roboto, Mono, put the comma at the end. And now we want the color to be colors dot red. Now let's save this one quickly. So the color will be colors.red. Put a comma there. Save again so it actually uh, formats it nicely for you. And we can have the font weight also. Let's say font weight should be font weight dot, let's say W600. So let's save it and let's run it again. Right, so now in the same line of text, we can actually have text formatted different ways by using the reach method with different text spans.
So let's say I wanted to have a space in between. I can either put the space after world or after the or before world or after hello there, and I will have a space between the two. Right, so now what I can also do is instead of having this next to each other, I can add a new line character there. So just a, a escape character and the end there. Running it again will place the word world underneath hello. So you can play around with these different text spans. And now I can have a totally different text span there again, just after that one as part of the children. And I can have another thing totally differently formatted. So let's have the text there as the exclamation mark for hello world and if I leave out the style now by basically just giving the text property of the text span and not giving it a style it will actually inherit the topmost style there which is the one that's part of hello which means that if I run this again I will have the exclamation mark at the end of world but it will still have the same format as the parent one which is the one that just follows or basically follows your reach method. So if you're not indicating a style in the children text spans, then it will inherit the style at the top for your original text span. So this is how you can do some really interesting stuff with your text widget by using the normal text widget and its style or using text.reach and then using text spans in order to do what you want to do. I hope you've enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.